Before we start the video, I'd just like to announce something new in the near future that's kind of unnamed as of now, but it's essentially coaching for lower ranks. I'll be coaching up to gold rank for now, and if you'd like to see your game get coached, the details are up on screen for what you need to submit. The email is corporategaming at gmail.com, maybe I'll get a special one for coaching in the future, but for now it'll do. So let's get right into the video. Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, we're approaching halfway into Season 8 as of when I'm writing, and I think it's about time that I should spread the wisdom and things that I've picked up from looking on the forum, watching videos, and getting a general sense of which heroes are doing better this season. Basically, I've done the research that you don't have to. Just a disclaimer that with the new changes that removed SR for Diamond and above, this video is kind of more geared towards the lower ranks, since higher ranks are more focused towards winning than actual SR changes, which means that these tips won't be as helpful, but still useful nonetheless. Second disclaimer, some of the tips might seem odd at first, but for a system that favors performance over winning, it'll definitely help your SR. Tip number 5. This tip is a bit optional, which is why it's on the bottom of the list. One of the things that you'll want to do is maximize your in-game performance. Something that you should probably do is actually try and hit two or three enemies before focusing a target. It sounds weird, but if you manage to get a couple hits on the Rhine and Roadhog before killing the Mercy, those extra elims you get from your team cleaning up after will help you out with a high elim count. Another thing is to minimize your suppression fire, or at least don't shoot unless you are actually aiming for the enemy, because you want to milk all the accuracy you can out of your match. For instance, memeing around before the doors open by shooting will lower your accuracy. One of the things that's a little less optional is poking. If you can poke for ult charge successfully, it increases your damage count and allows you to get your ultimate faster, both of which are pluses. Tip number 4 is to use your ultimate really as soon as you can. If you're doing pretty well in a match, you can probably get your ultimate 5 or 6 times defending all 3 points of Hollywood. In fact, my first placement match on Reinhardt, I was able to use my ultimate and get it back in less than 30 seconds because of how many kills I got from it. And then of course I was able to ult shortly after again. What I'm trying to say is that some people hold their ult for way too long, and when it comes to ults like Graviton or Earthshatter, you have to be the first person engaging, or else you'll cause your offense heroes to hold their ults for too long as well. And offense heroes, you need to realize when it is good to ult and when it is not. In short, ulting when your Zarya or Ryan has 50% of their ultimate is fine, because you can probably get yours by the time they need follow up from theirs. You need to frequently check in with your immobilizing assets constantly to gauge when it is good to ult. Support heroes, do your best not to panic ult. Other than that, Lucio's try not to get killed while ulting. Same for Mercy, but let's be honest, no one's playing Mercy after the nerf anyways. On to tip number 3, which is to keep your flaming to a minimum and carry when you need to. Every match has that one guy who really deserves to get roasted, let's be honest here. He's not doing his job and he's getting tilted. You have the power and probably the right to roast this guy like a Thanksgiving turkey. But you know what really ruins someone's day? When they know that they're playing trash and then someone tells them that they're bad or to switch off because they're garbage. And you know, I've had a bad day before and you've had a bad day before and this guy's probably having the same thing. Now I won't tell you to bring this guy back on his feet but you can sure as hell stop him from throwing. A teammate who's trying is always better than a teammate who's throwing or leaving, so flaming them won't make your situation better. This is when you have to go into carry mode. If you're aware that your Genji isn't doing enough DPS, you have to pick him up and carry him over that goal line. I've said it before, ranked overwatch is basically just a test of how hard you can carry. With the number of throwers and leavers you'll get on a bi-matchly basis, it's not like you're guaranteed the DPS or healing or tank you need. And that's when your team has to step in to pick up the slack. And don't dream of the Golden Land either, you can find plenty of stories of people in Grandmaster or even Top 500 as salty and that throw as often as Bronze Ranks. It never gets better, I can tell you that for certain. As someone who's been through Silver to Diamond, people don't stop throwing and leaving, trust me. On to the second last tip, this one is a little bit awkward. I'm kind of conflicted about it. Because I don't think anyone should one trick, but like, it's kind of there if you should need it. I, like, I'm not condoning playing just one hero, but if you've been in bronze for three seasons and you just want a little taste of silver, I mean, I guess you can do that, but just for that season, you know, if, if you end up one-tricking, no one, no one will like you, alright? In general, though, what, I think what I'm trying to say is kind of stop flexing, but also don't one-trick. Look, flex is really good for some situations, but you will get nowhere, do you hear me? They will keep adding heroes, and there's no way that you can learn to play all of them at a decent level at the same rate that they come out. 
You will never get out of where you are if you flex for just any hero. If you can flex for any healer, or flex to any tank, or flex to any DPS or whatever, that's fine. But just don't flex to any hero whenever it's called for. Essentially, your SR will reflect the average of how good you are on every hero instead of how it should be on a few heroes. Collect a group of basically up to 5 heroes to get decently good at, and then about 2 or 3 to get especially good at. Say Winston, Reinhardt, Genji, Moira, and Lucio to get good at, but Farah and Zenyatta to carry with. Cough, cough, totally not my hero pool or anything. This way you'll have a wide variety of heroes to play decently at, and a select few that you can carry with. Of course, having a couple other heroes as ace cards isn't bad, but just don't flex pick. Seriously, I used to flex pick back in silver. That's why I was in silver, so don't, and you should see some pretty steady results as you get better with your hero pool. Now here's the final advice that I'd say is really imperative. You're doing it already, and that is to spend a lot of your time looking for ways to improve your abilities. Usually by watching videos, sometimes even watching streams, if you happen to have like a really good 6 stack that you like to play with. It's really good to watch the Overwatch League games with your friends, and try to, I don't know, replicate the strategies or whatever. But anyways, by watching videos like this, it already proves that you're willing to learn and get better, which is obviously the first step to ranking up. You can't seriously think you're just going to get to Musilk levels just by playing the game, do you? If you don't have 8 hours a day to train your abilities, you have to advance yourself artificially by using videos and learning really specific tips before implementing them into your playstyle in-game. The best way to do that is by looking for guides and searching for any sort of information that you can find. Learning more specific things about playing your cast of heroes against difficult matchups or even going through advanced guides is an important step in mastering this game. If you're generally interested in improving your skills, this is probably one of the best ways you can do it. And I'm not just saying that because I happen to have tips videos, this is real stuff that I used to go from silver to diamond in season 4. I would watch a lot of Valkia, if you haven't guessed by my extremely far themed channel. Basically, I can attribute everything I know to him, and a little bit from Siegel as well. So yeah, I'm not joking. Watch some videos, look at some guides, and I'm sure it will help you out a ton. And would you look at the time, it looks like that's it for today's video, but hey, I'll be coming out with some more tips videos for certain heroes as well as more Farah guides for different maps, so be sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on because you don't want to miss those. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and let me know what you think was the most useful tip as well as some useful tips of your own. This is Carter signing off and as always, have a fantastic day.